Hi. Hello. How are you? I am good. How about you? I am good as well. Just going to wait a few minutes for more people to join. And then we can get started. How was your day? Um, it was full and it was hot. <laughs> what year is it? The day was ridiculously hot. Yeah. I actually was... thought it was baking at a few points. It, it was not easy. <laughs> good night, good night, everyone. Hey, Renika. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining. Hey, Aisha. Hey, hey, hey Terry. Hi, Full Moon. I am with no apology. That's a really cool name. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Okay, we're just going to give um, people one more minute to join, and then we'll get started. Cool. I'm looking forward to tonight's discussion. Me too. Me too. Answer any questions that you guys might have. I always love questions. All right, everyone, welcome to this session of Make It Happen with Chamara. Um, my name is Chamara Hollingsworth, and I am the owner of Vision to Reality International. I am an independent business owner for Total Life Changes, and the creator of Divas That Dazzle, um, Dynamic Diva, the author of Be You, Do You, Love You, a 30-day self-love challenge, and also the creator of the Make It Happen coaching program, which was the inspiration for these sessions on Tuesday nights. Um, I want to take this time to thank all of you who would have shared the flyer for this live and all of you who have joined. And definitely to thank you, Christina, for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, just a quick recap of the last session, which would have been two Tuesdays ago. That was stepping up from stuckness. And in that session, we would have covered why we get stuck, strategies for getting unstuck, and the role of being present and letting go in the, in the whole process of getting unstuck. However, today, we're going to be talking about the concept of sowing the seed. And I've asked Christina to join us to help with, you know, going through this process and, and, and why it really means. Um, so feel free at any point to drop any questions whatsoever in the comments box or any points that you may have. Um, I will be sure to include them into the conversation. All right. So... Before we jump into it, I just wanted to give a quick view of what sowing the seed means to me. I actually took some time to really think about it. And whereas I had one perception of it at the very beginning, as I thought about it, I realized it actually could very well be a lot wider than I was thinking. Um, and I must say I had a, a bit of difficulty pinpointing what it could mean. So today something clicked. I was going about my rounds today and at some point I went to Sky Mall and as I parked the car, I sat down and I just looked around. And while I was looking around, I realized, okay, there's a car. 
there's this building, there are all of these businesses around, all of these products, all of these services, you know, and each of them are literally a result of sowing the seed, you know. Um, it could be considered as an idea, sowing the seed, an intention, compliment, a smile. I think sowing the seed really is just a small action that has the potential to make a huge impact. And what I also noted is that not every seed flourishes, you know, and similarly, so, well, there are some seeds that are very well planned out that don't make it, yet there are other things that are unintentional that make it big time. Um, and I guess that's the story of things like relationships. And I guess that part leads us into what I would have asked Christina to come and talk about today, you know, the relationships that we have with people and how to go about sowing those seeds. Um, so let me introduce Christina. Okay, sorry, before I do that, does anybody else have any thoughts on what sowing the seed is? And if you do, in the chat while I introduce Christina. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I would have, I'm not quite sure exactly where I would have met Christina. I know at some point we had an interaction marketing workshop on. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to attend with my partner for that workshop and he came and brought back all the goods, all the good information, you know, um, so that I could learn as well. But there some pictures of some poetry sessions and so on. And I actually came across a picture um a picture with Christina in it. So I didn't even know that our past crossed <laughs> way way oh, way that. back mm -hmm. then you know but christina mm -hmm. of creative edge is passionate about marketing and seeing others succeed by building awareness of their brands um she's been doing marketing since secondary school and she brings the psychology angle of understanding your customers needs in order to help her clients to gain an edge in the market. Welcome, Christina. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Really glad to be here. And I hope we have a fantastic conversation tonight where you know, everybody can be blessed from any gems that are dropped tonight. So thank you guys for joining. And thank you for having me, Shamara. Um, in terms of what build, you know, sowing the seed means to me, um, I think it similar to your point of view i see it as baby steps i see it as letting go of anything that could get in your way and just taking one small step that could lead to you achieving your dream someday understanding that it won't happen overnight but one small step can actually propel you to getting there so i think that tonight's conversation is going to be really great okay so Christina, that being said, what are some of the ways that you would consider or if you could go a bit more in depth of what sowing the seed means to you in terms of, from you could take it from any angle, but I know I asked you specifically about relationships and, and building a network. So mm -hmm. from that angle, what does it really mean for you? So I can share two things. I can share my story about how I sold my seed to building Creative Edge to the point that it is now. And I also prepared four points for you guys this evening, uh, four major takeaways that I want everybody to have. So to start with the first, the first angle, um, sowing the seed for me, it was not a straight line. I mean, you know, we see stories online and we see memes and we see possible entrepreneurship and stuff, but it really is true. Building a business and the whole notion of success is not a straight line at all. Um, for me, 
it was a l dealing with a lot of self doubt like overcoming self doubt was i think my biggest hurdle and probably still is my biggest hurdle in business um so that was a major part that i had to overcome um in terms to be able to sow my seed and build my business and and really um get my ideas out and build this business that i had in my head so my journey looked a lot like uh applying for jobs coming out to UE not getting any jobs and you know working here and there but still not feeling satisfied and still knowing that I could do more I really wanted to do more with my talents and with my love for marketing so eventually I decided I am done working for people who don't value my 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 ideas you know and I just decided now is the time to start this business I mean I was still scared <laughs> but having um I'm this is going to be a good segue into Shamara's point about relationships because having good people around you will make all the difference so one of the key reasons that I was able to start my business is because I had a really really good support system and I had um a dear friend of mine who we actually went out and started our own businesses together like at the same time so you know having somebody there to take that leap of faith with you that that made all the difference for me so i definitely say um that is a good segue into point 1 which is build good relationships because you can't do this thing alone at mm -hmm. all okay yeah. um something you said a little earlier made me think when you were talking about it wasn't a straight line and it really came to overcoming self doubt i think sometimes it is really about developing the mindset you know um things like meditation affirmations and prayer to to help get you to that thought process of the fact that you can do this or that you have the power to create something that is so phenomenal whether it be a business a relationship anything um so that being said what what do you see the role of those things in you know developing relationships or building relationships sorry could you repeat the question i didn't hear i didn't okay. hear properly what, what do you see as the role of things like meditation affirmations and prayer um what what the role of those things or is there a role in terms of <clears throat> building relationships okay um so uh, my honest perspective on it is that um I think they're individually they're all wonderful things. Uh for me personally what I find and not only in my own journey but also talking to my clients a lot mm -hmm. I find that um when we do these things like meditation and doing affirmations and all of that I think that we're doing them subconsciously to get to a point where we feel okay and where we feel ready and we feel safe in mm -hmm. order to then go and start and to me that is that is a trap <laughs> that is a really really big trap okay. because i mean and i would never say don't do affirmations don't do meditation i love meditation mm -hmm. um but i realize just in being really really honest with myself mm -hmm. that a lot of the times we do these things hoping that they can be a plaster to our fear mm -hmm. hoping that they can fix our self doubt and then after we fix that self doubt then we're going to go and start and be amazing and that's just not how life works um the reality is that mm -hmm. you start and you do those affirmations and you do the meditation and you do all that stuff along with taking those baby steps because if you wait to take the baby steps you will never start I actually I actually do very much agree it could be a trap um but I also believe that one of the things that we tend to forget when we're doing those things is taking action um proper life um says that planning is the key uh -huh. you press the wrong thing let's see right and fear of one sorry Oh. 
Okay, yeah, so I agree. It's probably one, one of the leading causes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I we can agree with that. For sure. You know? So so what you're saying is even though there's um there are benefits to the meditation, affirmation and prayer, if we're not careful, we could very easily trap ourselves. But mm-hmm. the key here is to take the necessary actions in order to move forward. Yeah, because they, they will work hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so you mentioned that building relationships is step one. So you want to expand on that? Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, let me see. Building relationships when it comes to business, It can be a tricky thing. I understand. I mean, I have been at panel discussions where, you know, people say, um, don't hire friends and family is dangerous and stuff. And and I get that. Um, But what I would say, though, I think that intuition plays a very, very big part here in terms Mm -hmm. of knowing who is right for you and who is not right. I think you really have to listen to that intuition because... People say don't hire your friends and stuff, but my team, both of my team members are my friends. I mean, Mm -hmm. like some of my closest friends. (laughs) So it's it's all about using your intuition and and being guided in terms of understanding if a person really has your back or if they are just pretending, you know, you have to really, really listen in order to form the right relationships. And in addition to that, Forming relationships also looks like not being afraid to put yourself out there. So, for Mm -hmm. example, um, when it comes to networking, a lot of people are really, really afraid of networking. But you'll be surprised to know that in a room of 30 people, everybody is just as scared to talk to the next person as you are, you know? So it's really about letting go of those internal fears that we have I'm being willing to put yourself out there because you never know what can come out of just saying hi to a person, you know? Mm -hmm. I've experienced that for myself. Okay. So intuition and meditation go hand in hand. That's Jason's point. That's a very good point because the more you meditate, the the stronger your intuition becomes. Yeah, the more connected you are. Mm -hmm. Um, So you're saying that a level of vulnerability is needed Um, in order to really step out and get to know people or at least take that step in in starting a relationship and seeing Mm -hmm. what it is. And not even just vulnerability, letting go of our perceived notions that, you Mm -hmm. know, that everybody else has it put together and and everybody else knows what to say and, you know, and everybody else is Mm -hmm. confident. Nobody's confident. We're all over here just trying the thing. (laughs) <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. <laughs> so you can go of the notion, you know, that everybody has it all put together. That's that's something that's really big for us. We we step out into any setting and you start to look around and say, Oh my gosh, look at these people, look how well right. they're doing. And mm-hmm. here I am scrambling. And those people you, you don't know what they're going through. Exactly. At, at the end of the day, just to look as though they have it all together. Correct. Okay, don't, don't be afraid to fail. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes the fear is what really keeps us, it goes back to being stuck, you know, and, and not making the necessary moves. Okay. So, mm-hmm. any other points you wanted to make on building relationships before you move on to step two? Actually, no, I think unless anybody has questions, I think we are pretty good on building relationships. But Mm -hmm. you guys can let me know if you wanted any clarity or anything that I said so far. Just drop a comment. And if not, then we can move on to step two, which is, hmm, we should arguably be a step one. And Javi Yerwood says, be your own brand ambassador and embrace moments to learn. Absolutely. I think that people are generally really afraid to look like they don't know something mm-hmm. and they miss out on learning opportunities because of it. I am 
I am not afraid to learn. I mean, I have my moments of wanting to look put together. Everybody wants to look put together, right? <laughs> but the reality is that you only get better and you only get, quote unquote, put together when you allow yourself to learn and allow yourself to fail, even if it means publicly, which is pretty hard, I know. But you'll be a stronger person for it. Yeah, the whole contact feeling forward is really a thing, you know. Sometimes if you don't feel, I actually was reading it somewhere the other day when they were saying that pretty much sometimes success can keep you stuck because if you don't feel, then you don't know what changes you could make in order to be better, you know. Um, they're not saying all success, but you have to feel forward and don't be afraid. And one of the examples they use is in terms of, let's say it's sales. You have to decide that I'm going to, they actually made it like a game. I'm going to call 10 people and I'm going to get 10 no's, you know? And then if among the 10 people, somebody says yes, you know, you accept it, you celebrate, but then you go, oh crap. You know, I messed up my flow. I need to get 10 no's. So you, you, instead, you're kind of expect the rejection from doing things so if you start to think I don't want to be rejected you know mm -hmm. then you tend not to even bother if you go saying look let me see if I can get these 10 rejections over with you might actually find that the majority of the people that you talk to you you know simply because you approach them they actually want to know and they never had they were actually afraid to ask you anything um, exactly Okay, so two um, Papa Jason saying to accept criticism, um, it can only build you. It is, it is true. I fully, fully agree because I think there is something such as like emotional abuse, which is different than constructive criticism. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have to know the difference. Um, and then Ray Minister says, being afraid will happen at times. Being brave is what makes the difference. I agree with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Getting some traction today, man. Mm -hmm. Um, Jason is saying, everyone fails at some point. The trick is to make sure that you learn and fail. You learn and fail some sort of knowledge from the experience. Yeah, you get, yeah, you get some sort of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what the rest of the thing? Okay, Peterson is saying that he enjoys the moments. He enjoys those moments that others think that they that that he has failed because for him, he would have learned to approach the goal in a different manner that allows to that moment of learning that fosters the relationships, right? And important. Mm -hmm. Hi, Zynga. So I think we're getting some, some good points here as well. Um, anything that you want to say to any of these points that we have mentioned? I think that those are excellent points and they really tied into what we discussed before, you know, being willing to fail, being willing to put yourself out there because the, the growth that you're going to get from putting mm -hmm. yourself out there is better than the comfort of staying shy or staying in your comfortable little hole, you know. Uh, you feel so much better when it's done. When that growth is finished happening in that particular moment, you feel so much better and you can see the results in your life. So I agree with all of those points. Okay. Um, the job connect says that I find... I find that I learn more during failure and the lesson definitely lasts. So you don't make the same mistake. It's true. Sometimes when yeah. you, you could do everything wrong and the end result turns out to be pretty successful. And because you had that success, you might do it a couple more times. So a, a good example is starting a business, which is something that a lot of us do. Start a business and have no systems in place. Mm -hmm. You know? So while the business is now gaining momentum, everything is going great. 
and then that one day comes where you have, I guess, let's say, for the one of better words, customers, you know, and you make one mistake in the pro well, there's no process, so then you find yourself scrambling, you know, because you can't handle, you know, the the additional tasks at hand. But if you took the time from the very beginning to start to mm -hmm. observe what the process is and actually put it in writing, it might work better. Even it, like, for instance, a situation um, where maybe you fall ill. If you had the processes in place, somebody mm -hmm. else might be able to come in, look at your little book with your your um, procedures mm -hmm. and just follow yeah. through and get things done. So you, you, you've been succeeding, but you've been actually failing at the, the planning part, as Jason would have mentioned earlier, just having that plan in place or having those procedures in place for things to run more smoothly. Um, fine tuning is um, another thing that's mentioned here. Okay. So let me just be sure that I have it right because I did not put my numbers next to what you were saying. The first point is building relationships. And the second one is that intuition plays a very big role. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So anything that you want else that you want to, to add to this one before going on to the next? No, we I'm I'm ready. We can go on to the next one. Okay, so what is the next step? So the next point that I want to share is really and truly what should, what should come at the very beginning, which is know your worth. And by now it might sound cliche because there are so many you know, inspirational posts about it, inspirational pages, inspirational quotes, inspirational speakers. And, like, and the message might be getting tired right now, but mm -hmm. the reality is that if you don't know your worth, that affects so many different aspects of your business mm -hmm. from the way you market yourself or don't market yourself from the way you price your products uh the way you the, the the clients that you choose to work with because you know never know you might be holding yourself back from opportunities because you think you're too small you know and these are all things that i've experienced myself so i'm not even talking at anybody tonight <laughs> but i definitely say knowing your worth is uh, essential in building the foundation for your business uh, and sowing that seed. You know, once you start it on, on a good note with an understanding of the value that you bring to the table, it will actually allow you to make better decisions as you start to grow your business and as you start to branch out as well, for sure. I actually think this, this bit... Um also ties back in with one of the, I guess you might see this happening when your clients come to you, one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have is knowing how to price their products. And I think in a sense that really ties back in because a lot of the times when we start off, we undervalue um, what mm -hmm. we have, we are putting out there into the world. Yes, you know that when you start, you can't charge the same thing as somebody who's been well known and has it out there but like for instance when i remember when i first started doing like coaching and, and so on i used to charge like between 25 and 50 dollars for a session and each time i used to drive to meet the person by the time i was done it was like well, what was really the point you, you know were making a lot exactly um mm -hmm. and even even though i knew it, i wasn't confident enough in myself at that time Okay. To, to charge more so that it would be of value to me. Um, yeah. I think it's really important to know your worth, definitely. Um, and I think when you know your worth too, then you put out more quality um, mm -hmm. products as well. Um, and we don't even realize the connections. Uh, Full Moon says that we need to know exactly what kind of plant or tree we want before planting i think yes having that vision is essential for where you want to go even if things change along the way if we don't have that vision or that goal um 
then we're just running around in circles mm-hmm. and just wasting energy. Anything Definitely. you want to add to that? Well, in terms of um, having your vision, to be honest, that's, what, that's the first thing I start with mm-hmm. in all of my consultations. Getting clear on the vision that the person has for their business because when that is clear, all the decisions can fall into place easily. And, and not just fall into place, but fall into place in a strategic manner that would actually get you to where you want to be. So I fully agree with that point. Knowing your vision is essential if you are going to make good decisions and know what opportunities are right for you and what are wrong based on having a clear vision. If not, you'll just be pulled in several different directions and just be floating around. But having that clear vision really helps. This is kind of like a by-the-way question. But how, uh, it, it interests me. How often do you find that people come to you and are not clear on their vision? Um, more often than I would want. <laughs> um, why do you, why do you think, well, I mean, it, do you think it is only because they don't necessarily know their worth? Or do you think there are other factors that play into that as well? Well, um, I think that knowing your worth helps in being able to have a clear vision. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that is vice versa. Um, I think that there are several factors that go into whether or not you have a clear vision for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, One is, you know, just how people's brains work. Everybody's brain is not super structured uh, in terms of, logistics and stuff everybody you know there's some people who are big picture people and then there are some people who are fine details people so i find that the the people who know the fine details often um have a difficult time being able to see the big picture but once somebody helps them to paint the big picture then it's easier for them to work out the fine details so it is a number of things Mm -hmm. and but also i think confidence goes into that as well you know, the more confident you are, the easier it is to, to decide this is what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find that when people lack self-esteem, it often makes it difficult to make a decision sometimes. Of course, it's not hard and fast. It's just mm-hmm. some observations as I have worked with clients as well. Mm-hmm. I find sometimes indecision is a big thing. So I, oh, yeah. I can definitely agree with that. I've had that challenge. Mm-hmm before um especially when when if, if you're like me have a lot of ideas but then there's a decision which one do i go with you know and then when you start mm-hmm. going on that path you start realizing oh, maybe maybe you should try this other one instead so mm-hmm. anyway, do you find that you come across people that have a lot of unfinished projects um yeah it does happen mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of the time it is I have clients who had the business idea for a very long time mm-hmm. and they're only now deciding to start like mm-hmm. really putting their back into it and making this business work. Um, and, you know, there's so many things that happen along the way, you know, uh, life happens. I mean, people get children and, you know, children take up a lot of your brain space. I mean, they take a lot from you. I'm not saying that it's impossible to have children and run your business because we know some really great examples of people who do. Um, But, you know, it just takes a little bit more out of you to be able to still balance having a business as well. I mean, and there's so many other things. Some people get sick. Some people, you know, issues at home. There's so many things that go into why um, people have unfinished projects. And I just see my job as to hold people's hands gas them up make them feel confident make them feel like they can achieve this and mm-hmm. just put them along as much as they can fair enough um okay so <laughs> how do you go about the process of helping persons to clarify their vision mm-hmm. um well one of the ways that I do that, mm-hmm. I, I ask a lot of questions in my consultations. So people come expecting, you know, maybe they're going to ask some questions and 
get, you know, some notes. <laughs> Um, you know, okay. all these different things. Um, mm -hmm. my, the last thing you, I heard you say was get some notes because my camera stuck. So if you don't oh. mind, just... Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people might come thinking, you know, they're just going to ask some questions, get some feedback here and there. But I go really, really deep in terms of the questions that I ask mm -hmm. to make sure that I understand what drives them, what lights them up, what inspires them, um, mm -hmm. what do they want to achieve in life, you know, who are some of their role models, like, what are they seeing, why did they start this business in the first place, like, why did they have the idea in the first place, where did it come from, all of those things, um, just in natural conversation, help us to get clear on what are some of their strengths, and uh, what they would like to see for themselves, and, and if it's a legacy that they want to build, you know, that helps to shape the conversation and the vision as well. So it's just really about having good conversation, asking the right questions, and helping people to see things that are in their head, mm -hmm. but they just didn't realize. That's all it is. Fair enough. Like, you know, actually, yeah. you know, made me wonder how, how important do you see, well, not how, how to best ask this question. You have a background in psychology. How do you find that helps you to do your job even better or gives you that creative edge? Uh -huh, thank you. <laughs> um, well, so, to be very clear, I'm not a psychologist for anybody listening. <laughs> um, I did a minor in psychology at university mm -hmm. and, um, and I have never done any training in terms of counseling. Um, mm -hmm. I just have a natural curious mind mm -hmm. um and i and i studied psychology in the first place because i wanted to use it to help people mm -hmm. um and i didn't stop short at a minor because i just didn't want to go all the way up to doctorate in order to you know be able to practice i i just didn't want to be in school for so long i wanted to be out in the world doing my thing so mm -hmm. i did the minor so that i could have some understanding and, and use it in my work and, and it came in really handy uh, because I learned a lot about how the human brain works, how people work in terms of, you know, doing sociology courses and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and it really helped to shape my understanding, or at least a foundation of my understanding in terms of how people work. Because I've used mm -hmm. that foundation, I use my real life conversations to build on that foundation. So it helps, yes. But I find the real life aspect of my work, really talking to people and listening to people really carefully um, has really helped in my ability to to draw greatness out of people then, just by listening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me see. Let's, I'm just going to peek back to see if I miss any comments. Any comments? Hi, Vonda from Empowerment Life Coaching. Hey. Okay, so I don't see, no, I don't see any other comments. Okay. Just remember, everyone, uh, you can feel free to ask any questions or share any points throughout the, the course of this discussion, and we'll be sure to include it into the conversation. Um, okay, so we've looked, in terms of sowing the seed at building relationships, we've looked at how in the role that intuition plays in sowing the seed as well as the need to know your worth um and you did mention that you had four points so what is the fourth point what's the fourth step i'm very excited to find out uh, we actually covered so much that some more points came up as we were talking <laughs> so i actually have um two more Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so my third point that I want to share tonight is uh, stop comparing yourself to others. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. Stop comparing yourself to others. Now, the reason I say that is because, and I think I had been subconsciously doing it myself, right? Mm -hmm. 
whereas you know i have this vision for where i want my business to be and just how i want my brand to work and and i'm seeing the people who are doing what i want to be doing and i think i was subconsciously mm-hmm. comparing myself to them and feeling bad because i didn't have all the things that they have mm-hmm. you know all the maybe all the equipment maybe um the big fancy office maybe um webinars with 5000 people you know <laughs> i think that i had been subconsciously um comparing myself and feeling bad about that when the reality is that you have to really stop and think about um the people that you are looking up to they have been doing this thing for so long they have gone through what you are currently going through you know um i was even at spending this in a creative vibe session the other day that you know we we look at how there are some people that we look up to and they have you know we are trying we are feeling bad about not showing up on ig live you know wanting to go live and feeling nervous about it and stuff but the reality is that they have gone through the the fire of um technology issues mm-hmm. um poor camera quality um the live cutting out in the middle of it and having to start back and you know they've gone through all the embarrassments publicly mm-hmm. and they have built from going through it and learning in public so why can't we go through the fire too and get to mm-hmm. that stage eventually i think that a lot of the times we stop ourselves from going through the fire because of that fear of failure you know mm-hmm. we talked about that earlier up in the call but we just need to realize that we need to give more ourselves more grace and a more freedom to put ourselves out there and let our ideas grow that being said i i actually started thinking how how do we expect to become the expert with all the experience Yeah. <laughs> um okay exactly. so um Jason is asking for us to explain what intuition actually is. Expand on what intuition actually is. Um Okay. Mhm. And then empowerment life coaching says she thinks that as small business owners um sorry for assuming that you're a she um they think yeah that's fine okay that small business owners um we all do that at a point in time mm. however we must realize that we have our own unique gifts and skills okay so we all compare at yeah. some point in time so we have our own unique gifts skills and resources in general additionally there's an audience out there for everyone i i definitely agree with that one um mm-hmm. each person has their own following because each of us is, is as you said unique you know um and do, 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 do. okay the com- okay she did the comparison comparison thing herself and quickly came to the realization that she needed to stop which is a good realization mm-hmm. there's there are lots yeah. of us who don't come mm-hmm. to that realization until it's too late so so that we don't forget we're going to if you want to just um expand on what intuition is okay so obviously i'm no intuition expert <laughs> um but for me personally what intuition looks like is uh, for me it's a gut feeling it mm-hmm. is my body talking to me it is how my shoulders feel it is um adrenaline in my stomach it is it shows up in how heavy i might feel in a particular moment how weighed down i might feel and whenever i huh, whenever i am asked to do something and i know i don't want to do it i'll get one of those feelings mm-hmm. you know whenever i want to do something and i i know that there's something that i really really want to do my body will tell me because it will it will light up in a way that is hard to describe mm-hmm. <laughs> but i just feel like spending time in meditation spending time in really quiet listening um 
spending time in silence and getting to know yourself, you actually identify how your body speaks to you for mm-hmm. you personally, because it is a personal thing. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I I really agree because I really think that intuition is, in short, your connection to yourself. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. If you're not connected, then you don't know the signs. And yeah. the more connected you are, like it could be as simple as for the time somebody walks into the room, you get either a good vibe or va- a bad vibe about the person, and yeah. then sometimes you ignore it. Whether you, you, you get a good vibe and then you say, I can tell this person no, and then something happens and he was like, cheese on it, should have followed my mind. You know? Yes, but, yes, we heard that a lot. <laughs> and, and, you know, so, so it's just being aware of those signs that make you, you know, realize whether you should or shouldn't do something. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my view of what intuition is because like you am not intuition expert <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. um, you mentioned that you had um, it's after stop comparing self to others oh yeah um, so we have, we have the final point we have the mm-hmm. number four yes so number four is start even if you don't think you're ready uh-huh start even if you don't think you're ready and the reason i say that is because we'll never be ready you know um as i was sharing earlier and hey cheryl thanks for joining you know as i was sharing earlier i think that um as you had mentioned the value of affirmations and meditation um i think that those things are great but we do them in order to be ready. <laughs> we do the affirmations in order to feel confident. Um, and the truth is that confidence only comes from doing the work. Confidence mm-hmm. only comes from taking those baby steps, whereas one is one could look like you're going to Kaipo and registering the business name. You know, that is one one thing that you can do physically, <laughs> which if you have the $104, I hope it's not more expensive now. <laughs> but if you have $104, you either drive up there or you catch a bus and you get to Warren's and you fill out that paperwork. That is something that you can do. Even mm-hmm. if you have not in your stomach, that is something that you can physically do, right? Um, something else that you can do, even if you still have knots in your stomach, is to create an Instagram page, you know? Um, create it and just name it. And even mm-hmm. if you don't have a clue what you're going to post yet, you've done something. You've done the first important step by creating a home for where your business is going to live on social media. So mm-hmm. the truth is that in my business journey, the only way I have become more confident is to actually put myself out there and to learn from experiences even if they feel horrible in the moment you know even if uh even if i had a horrible client experience it would have taught me what not to do next time you know Mm -hmm. um even if you don't know what colors work for your brand you try something or you talk to somebody who is an expert in terms of branding and get some help but the point Mm -hmm. is that if we try to wait until we have it all put together until we've done all the webinars and until we've done all the courses at yes and 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 small business association you know we 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 tend to wait until we feel ready but you never Mm -hmm. ever feel ready so you just have to start by taking baby steps one baby step at a time and you will actually grow in the process and feel so much more confident as a result of taking those baby steps so start Mm -hmm. before you're ready i think um too much of us expect perfection before making the move so i can definitely agree with that um just tracking back empowerment life coaching says that intuition is in in their view is the self, something based on your inner feelings and nothing that is factual. So it's like your gut feeling, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. So Papa Life or Jason says internal guidance. Um, definitely. Right. 
So Empowerment Life Coaching agrees with starting even when you don't think you're ready and, mm -hmm. and agrees with also that those steps do a lot and help you to gain the confidence. Um, <laughs> okay, for Moose thinks that this conversation should be extended because this is the hour is not enough. We actually only have like eight minutes left. So I can <laughs> right. agree. I think this is something that we could actually, if if you are open to it, roll on over to next week, you know, and see how we could um can 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 expand on some of these things that we would have talked about today. But um, we mm -hmm. could discuss afterward and see if this is a possibility, mm -hmm. or even if another time would be better. Um, mm -hmm. Stay humble. Humility is a hard skill to learn. I think that's true. Because it's really about ego. And sometimes we really need to, to deal with our egos. You know, I think that's very important. Um, you can't wait. The wait will be forever. It's true. The wait will be forever. Okay. Right. So Peterson says to be bold and overcome those fears that hinder you and make you small. Step. Oh, sorry. Make small steps and one day you'll be able to say what it is that you can and can't do. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, don't worry. We have the we'll have the recording so that you'll be able to see it from the beginning. Yeah. Right. Okay? <laughs> um mm -mm -mm. Do you guys yeah. have any more questions for us? Before we wrap up, um, for Empowerment Life Coaching or anybody who joined the call late, I can just go over my points from the top. Um, mm -hmm. So we talked about the importance of building a relationship um, and using your intuition to determine who is really for you or who's against you because, you know, there are some great pretenders out there. Um, but using your intuition and we talked about the value of um of meditation in order to mm -hmm. connect to yourself and figure out you know how to make good decisions that are best for you so building good relationships is key we talked about that um next we talked about knowing your worth because mm -hmm. once you get clear on the value that you bring to the world and the value that you bring to your market uh, you can then make better decisions in terms of how you market yourself, how you brand yourself, how you price your products and services. So knowing your worth is a great way to start building a good foundation for your business as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the importance of not comparing yourself to others because mm -hmm. the reality is that the people who you are comparing yourself to, either one, um, are going through just as much stress as you are, or mm -hmm. two, they have spent lots and lots and lots of years going through the fire that shaped them into being at the level that they're at today. So never, ever, ever compare yourself to anybody because you don't know what's going on behind the screen, right? Mm -hmm. And and then finally, we talked about um, starting even if you don't think you're ready because when we're having this conversation about sowing the seed, we often think that we need to be ready before we sow that seed. When the reality is that life doesn't work like that and business doesn't work like that, we always have to start in order to grow and, and grow into the people that we want to be and grow into the businesses that we want to have. So as, as many baby steps as you can, just focus on one baby step at a time and do it even if your stomach is in knots. Do it even if your hands are shaking and your head is sweating. You just need to do it because you'll come out on the other side and see how greater you are as a result of taking those small baby steps. Thank you, Christina, for summarizing those. Um, just to add, based on what was said, um, I want, I think it's important for everybody to be aware that sowing the seed can be found in anything. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. everything that's around you is a result of a seed that was sown at some point. And to start sowing a seed, it could be as simple as an idea, smiling at somebody, giving somebody a nice little compliment, um, and, and acknowledge that every small action 
or every small step you take has the potential for massive impact. Um, mm, mm, mm. Okay, very quickly, you might, you might not be able to answer these comments, but I like to read through them. Okay, so Cheryl, hi Cheryl. She says that she loves what you said about starting even in imperfection. Um, oh yeah. The empowerment life coaching loves the point. Uh, Panjabi Yearwood says, thank you for the well-rounded discussion on building one's business and trust that this forum can go further. Um, empowerment life coaching says the intuition sorry intuition meditation know your self-worth don't she's just summarizing it don't compare yourself to others start even if you don't think you're ready all good points um proper life and whatever you do try to do it in the best of your ability a man can't assume to do what a giant can do i think i love that i really love that mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so we have I would say about two minutes left, All right? So I will take this opportunity, Christina, to thank you once again for joining us. I really enjoyed the discussion. I do agree with um, some of the persons that would have said in the chat that I think it's something that could go further. And I would really look forward to the possibility of discussing even more.